Hi, my name is Mari and I work for the Young Scientist Program at USC. In this week's video, we are going to be investigating why different objects are made of certain materials. Have you ever thought about why your kitchen cups are made of glass or maybe why your shirt is made of cotton? Um, how do you think you would feel if your bed was made out of wood or if your scissors were made out of styrofoam? That wouldn't work so well, would it? The goal of today's lesson is to start to think about the different materials that objects are made out of and why someone chose to use that material instead of a different one. So let's start out with thinking about some materials that everyday objects are made out of. So off the top of my head, I can think of wood or metal or glass or fabric or plastic or ceramics. These are all different types of materials that everyday objects are made out of. But let's think of some words to describe these materials now. So maybe like hard or soft or heavy or light or smooth or rough. So there's a bunch of different words that we can use as describing words to let someone else know what type of material we're using, right? Maybe some things are flexible and some are stiff and some things get hot when they touch something else that's really hot and some things don't, right? These are all different things that we can use to try to understand why materials are chosen for certain objects. So when we think about it, we wouldn't want our clothes to be stiff and hard, right? We want them to be soft and flexible. But at the same time, you wouldn't want your scissors to be all loosey-goosey. You'd want them to be sharp and you want them to be strong, right? So all of these words that I'm using to describe these materials, these are physical properties of those materials. Physical properties are characteristics of an object that you can see or measure without changing the material, such as mass, volume, density, and flexibility. So now I have another question for you. Have you ever taken a ride on an airplane or maybe seen one fly up in the sky over your head? Well, have you ever thought of what that airplane is made out of? If you were able to describe the type of material that you think an airplane should be made out of, how would you describe it? I personally would use words like light because it has to fly, right? Or smooth because you want it to fly really cleanly through the sky. Or strong because it has to be able to stand up to really, really high wind speeds. And it also needs to be able to take cold temperatures because when you're really high up in the sky, it's really, really cold. So it turns out that airplanes are actually made out of something called aluminum. And aluminum is a metal that is very light, but also very strong. So it can do all those things that I talked about, all those things that we need an airplane to be able to do. And aluminum will do a much better job of making an airplane than something like glass or wood, right? Because they don't have the right physical properties. So in order for engineers and designers to choose the correct material for their object that whatever they're designing, they have to go and put multiple different materials through a set of tests. They have to test all the different types of materials to figure out which one is going to be best for what they're designing. And one of my very best friends, actually, her name is Nicole. She studies materials engineering here at USC as well. Nicole is a South African immigrant who worked for Boeing, which is a company that makes and designs airplanes. And today for our activity, we're going to be engineers like Nicole and test out different materials to make a paper airplane. Today's question is what type of paper would make the best paper airplane? So for this activity, you're going to need two different types of paper. If you have more, that's Awesome. You can use as many as you'd like. You can test as many different types of paper because remember, materials engineers and designers, they, they test as many materials as they think they should to make sure that they're making the right choice with their material. So the more the merrier, but you're going to need at least two different types of paper 
for our paper airplanes. And once you have your two types of paper, we are going to be making our prediction. So for this activity, I'm gonna be using normal printer paper and construction paper. So if I were to describe these two pieces of paper, the printer paper is a little bit lighter. The construction paper is definitely stiffer. Um, they are the same size and they're the same shape. Oh, just kidding. The construction paper is a little bit bigger, but they're generally the same size and shape, same shape. Um, so yeah, the construction paper weighs more, has more mass, and the printer paper is a little bit flimsier. It moves around a little bit easier. Um, so my prediction is actually that the construction paper airplane is going to go farther. And so now it's time to make our planes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the first one step by step, and you can follow along with me. Um, and then I'll make the other one. And I will also then include a picture of the step-by-step -step instructions that you can pause on at any point in the video if you would like to and make your own airplane, okay? So to start, okay, so I'm gonna show you on the printer paper. So the first step is to fold it in half the long way. So you're gonna fold it over like this and then just fold along that edge. Okay, so now you have one fold. So now that you have it folded in half, you're gonna fold each of the top corners into the middle. So if I take it here, and I just fold it down like that. And then you're gonna do it on the other side as well. So once you have both the top corners folded down, you're gonna fold these middle corners all the way into the center as well, okay? So I will do it really quickly and then I'll show you what it looks like. So on one side, it looks like this. I just took this corner, folded it all the way into the middle and I'm gonna do it on the other side. So now I have a paper that looks like this and then I'm gonna fold it back along the middle again, but in the other direction. So you have the little, you can use your center crease again, but you're gonna fold it back the other directions. So now you have the triangle here and the last step is to fold these top wings down to the bottom. Okay, so you're gonna fold these all the way down. Now it looks like this, and I'm gonna do it on the other side. So your finished product should look like this, and then if you pull the wings out a little bit, there's your airplane, okay? So this is gonna be our airplane. If you want, you can give it a staple or two to hold it together. I will say that in order to get your best results, you're gonna to wanna to make your paper airplanes exactly the same on both of them. So if you add staples to one of them, you should add it to the other one as well, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and make my other paper airplane, and then I'm gonna show a diagram of step-by-step -step instructions on how to make the airplane in case you couldn't keep up, okay? So now I have my second paper airplane and I'm ready to test out my two different designs, actually the same design, two different materials, okay? Now it's testing time. And what we're gonna do to test them is just throw it across the room and then see which one goes farther, okay? And you wanna make sure that you use the same throwing technique with both of them, try to throw it the same amount of strength behind each of them to make this as accurate as possible, giving you the best scientific results on this, okay? So I'm gonna go test my planes.
Okay, so for me, the construction paper one did end up going farther. And so the last thing to do um, for our activity today for this video is to draw a conclusion as to why this material worked a little bit better than this one did. And my conclusion that I think I am gonna draw from this is that my construction paper airplane went farther than my printer paper airplane because it's heavier. And while that might seem weird because normally airplanes are a light material, for this one, I think that because it's heavier, it could go a little bit faster through the air and it didn't get as caught up with the air resistance as this one did, okay? So that's our video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned a little bit about how engineers can pick materials for different objects.